Alright guys, welcome back. Uh, so this is the next installment of the, well, my hack box, uh, or my on-the-go box, if you want to sound a little less sketchy. So in the last couple parts of the series, we've gone over, well, this empty section of the box here, which are all of my electrical components, my, my inputs, outputs, sensors, all that, the, you know, the electrical bits. Not to say that the rest aren't electrical bits, but the smaller electrical bits. So in this next part of the video, we're going to cover my my higher powered, um, well, my power supply bits, really. But to get things started, let's go over sort of this smaller section here. So I've been setting this up over the past couple months, and I've realized that, you know, relays are a wonderful, wonderful tool to keep around. 90, well, yeah, 90% 90 of the time you don't really need to, try to, you know, deal with something high-powered, you know, AC 120 and whatnot, but occasionally, yeah, you do. And in probably another video series I'll be creating is my home automation series. Uh, half the time you do want relays, you know, you need to turn on lights or fans and, you know, stuff like that. So... I keep around, uh, this is a, really these two items here are the same thing, they're, uh, you know, converter, or not converter boards, but boards that make it easy for you to control high-powered relays with a microcontroller. I tend to get these, you know, in bulk on eBay, just, you know, cheapest whatever you can find. Sorry about the, the dog out there. So, I keep these around. This is one with two re relays on board. I got this one that's only got one relay. It's just convenient. You know, you don't always want to have to wire up the transistor and the current limiting resistor and the, you know, the flyback diode. The, you know, you don't always want to have to set all that up. Sometimes you just, you just want to have the relay and trigger it. So, you know, honestly, these boards are cheap. They may not last a lifetime, but they're perfectly good for hacking things together. And they just take, you know, I, I believe it's 5 volt uh, signal. Yeah, 5 volt relay right there. 5 volt signal, ground, and then your control signal. Really useful little boards to keep around. I like to keep at least, you know, at least this pair. This, you know, one and two relay boards. And then just for the hell of it, I keep an extra couple of relays just on hand. Bare relays. Probably won't really use them. I'm probably going to f favor these boards over actually needing to use a raw relay Especially in the field when I'm just hacking something together, but you never know so you know they're, they're not too big Yeah, they're kind of chunky, but they're not too big nice to keep around so those are my relays and then Oh, what do you know? Actually, in a previous video, I noted how I have a couple of these little battery connectors. Apparently, I have them in multiple places in the same box. I love to keep these little battery connectors around. They're really useful. You know, just little... I, I think they're uh, mostly used in the RC vehicles uh, in those, but I keep them around just because, you know, it's really nice to not have to, like, solder your power supply directly to your board and, you know, dedicate your, your one power supply to one item. So, I like to keep these around. I could have barrel jacks, but honestly, on the, you know, on the go, this is going to be easier. So, might as well keep them around. I'll have to remember to find those in the other bag and put them in here. So, here I got some, these are just uh, linear, uh, linear voltage converters. I uh, what, can't think of the actual proper name. Um... But I got a few, I uh, got three 7805s. So these obviously, the 05 is the, the voltage there, the 78 is the, the series number. You know, one of the most common uh, voltage regulators there are out there. They're, you know, they're fine. When you need it, you need it. Uh, you know, and that's also why in uh, another previous video I showed that I keep a little heat sink on hand. That's this is exactly why I keep the heat sink on hand, because these will generate heat like nobody's business. Yeah, so, you know, they're only rated, I think it's either 0.8 or 1 amp, uh, maybe 1.2, but, you know, not a whole ton of current, but half the time you don't need a lot of current anyway. So, these work pretty well. Then now I also have, because microcontrollers are getting lower powered, I got the LM uh, 1117s. So these are 3.3 volt uh, 
power, or uh, not power supplies, I'm sorry, uh, voltage regulators. I keep actually a lot more of these on hand now versus the 7805s just because I have a lot more projects that are becoming 3.3 voltage uh, level. So I keep these on hand and like I said in a previous video, that's why I have all those, those capacitors because, uh, you know, you put a 12 volt power supply onto one of these guys and your output is going to just be crap. I mean, they will heat up, the voltage will fluctuate. It's just gonna be crap. So I like to keep these on hand as well as the caps to smooth out whatever you got, you know. I just like to keep smooth power, especially with the new new series of microcontrollers are much more finicky about power than they used to be. Annoying, yes, but eh, you, you learned a little with it. I actually have just recently, so this is exactly what I'm talking about, this is one, you know, a nice little voltage regulator that I just threw together. You know, again, make life easier. It's easier to use one of these than to throw together a pair of those. Well, so I threw together my own little voltage regulator here. So this has got on it a, uh, this is an LM1, uh, 1117 regulator with a nice little heat sink I got. These are, honestly, you can get these really cheap online. And then I got a little 22 microfarad cap and a 0.1 microfarad cap. And those just, you know, smooth out the power supply. Just, you know, keep everything nice and nice clean signal. It's not going to be, you know, amazing or anything, but it'll be good enough for most microcontroller work. And I got one of these nice little battery connectors on there. See, I use what I have. That takes care of those. Now, I got two more items in here. So these are not linear regulators, they're switching regulators. And uh, one of them, this is the, this is a step down regulator that I have. So this will take a higher voltage and step it down to a lower voltage. And then I got a, I presume a step up, yep, step up written on there. So this will take a, you know, a smaller voltage and step it up. These are going to be always there, you know, well, not always, but 99% of the time they're going to be better than, than putting together, you know, a little regulator, you know, one of these little guys. But they're more expensive, you know, this is like three or four dollars versus maybe a buck fifty in total of parts. Plus, more satisfaction when you build it yourself. Always better. But sometimes you do need, you know, a, a nice clean power supply and you know, or or maybe you need some some regulated supply that isn't three three point three or five volts. Maybe you need you know a seven volt power supply or something. Yeah, yeah. It's just nice to keep these on hand. There are you know variable regulators like this, but yeah, eh, it's easy to keep on hand. So might as well. So there's that. Now last section is a large section, and this was a whoop, got in here. See, so I got one of my. Well, spare Apple USB charger. Not really intended for charging in this case. Nope, this is for powering little projects. Figure I'd just keep it around. I got, you know, bunches of old iPhones. Keep this around. Nice and good. And here I got myself. This is cheap. This is just a, you know, Walmart. Nice, cheap little, little th uh, three prong uh, power strip. You know, it's great. You, you know, you're going around and need to plug in a laptop and then a project and you know it's just it's nice to keep whoop, it's nice to keep it on hand so yeah that's what I got nice and useful it takes up a lot of space but hey there we go so that concludes the the power section of the hack box uh, the last well not the last section but the last section of this specific box will be a, another installment and it will be the microcontroller and programming side of things so I'll tell you guys all about my favorite microcontrollers, which ones I keep on hand, you know, that sort of stuff. So stay tuned for next time. See you guys later.